is. It's the midweek update. It's June 8th. It's Joe with you here. Let's get in to what's going on so far this week. Now, folks, I'm going to give you my two cents on the markets. We're also going to discuss some trades, hopefully, together. And I just want to make sure that you guys got to take responsibility for it. Follow your own trading plan. You guys know the drill. So let's jump right into it. The markets continue to consolidate at resistance levels. We've heard Rob and Darren talk a lot about this on the midweek, or I shouldn't say the midweek, sorry, folks, the trading room. And they were discussing consolidation in between a level. I absolutely agree with that 100%. And lo and behold, folks, here we are on Thursday, and we are right in that same area. We can't see any traction gained by the bulls or the bears. There's no conviction there. There is still cautiousness when it comes to sentiment. Sentiment. And we found ourselves a strong bounce off of a low. Now what? It's kind of this thing where a lot of traders that I've talked to and worked with over the last week or so, well, I don't really want to dump anything right now because I'm in a good situation. Everything's okay. And we've got a lot of corrective action going on. There's a lot of things getting, for lack of a better term, murdered out there. Uh, cryptocurrencies is one of them. Those high flyers are still getting punished. Um, to, to, to this day so but there's a lot of stuff out there that's still holding true financials they have slid a little bit but not as bad as uh, some of the high flyers Healthcare's holding in there okay real estate to tell you the truth folks has really made me raise an eyebrow I'm impressed that it's just actually hanging on so I don't think that we have that capitulation low yet we do have that was a painful sell-off we took a big breath here we're consolidating in a range However, I'm not seeing anybody really racing out to throw money back into these markets. We got all sorts of interesting economic data. I love what I put here, good or bad. So I can talk to anybody out there and get both, good and bad. So we got consumer credits higher. Is that good? Well, to tell you the truth, yes, the consumer's active, but they're getting into debt. Trade deficit lower. Now, that's a really good one. We're under, understand, folks, we got over $100 billion for the first time I think it was last month, and it's come down uh, to about 87, somewhere around there, and I know it's kind of hard to, to relate to, but it's showing a slowdown in the trade deficit, meaning that we're not importing as much. Now, does that mean that we're not consuming as much? So that could actually lead to something worse. Kind of funny, right? Because we're trying to hedge off inflation, but at the same time, we don't want to stop our consumer. Then the non-farm payrolls is higher. I think this is good, period. And the reason being is because people are getting jobs, we're adding jobs, whether or not we hit recession, whether or not we see uh, a lot of pressure when it comes to inflation and, and, and worries, people are active and working. So it's this kind of a very cool thing to see that the Fed's last couple of moves and these interest rate hikes are actually having an impact on the economic data. The problem is we need to be a little bit more of like a detective here and try to read the tea leaves to try to figure out what's going to come first. Are we going to fall apart? Are people going to panic? Or can we sustain this? And uh, that's what I'm seeing. So we're not getting a lot of clear information, which, once again, that could relate completely to how these markets are, are reacting. Now, with that being said, guys, we go out to our trade ideas, and I've got a slew of them. I've got a bunch, and this is all I like for today, for today, right? Uh, I want to actually take a look at a live trade, folks, that we're going to put on tomorrow. So any help will, will would be greatly appreciated if you guys want to start typing some stuff in there. But I am leaning more towards a neutral trade. And I had a list of bulls that were pretty decent, and none of them really followed suit. On the bearish side, this week so far, guys, I'm going to get to it in a minute, this bounce has just erased the majority of them. And so I'm not finding any sort of directional advantage but these neutral ones are hanging in. So let's take a look at one that has been pretty decent on the upside. Now, folks, what I love about this, this is a sideways to uptrade that Rob has been talking about, I believe on, if it wasn't Monday, it was also on Sunday. And it's just perfect. It's absolutely been perfect. This ascending triangle pattern above the 36 and a half mark. And if you did any sort of diagonal spread in the next week, week and a half, you are just loving it. Great trade. It's been awesome. This is why we like the sideways. Uh, to slightly up or sideways to down. We don't want to be too directional here, and it's just been great. So we're going to keep this up on this list, something if you guys aren't in, you might want to investigate. So keep that in mind. So here is 
X, Y, L. This came from this class last week as a sideways trade. I put a little niche on it saying maybe down, and I just love the fact that it didn't get above that resistance. Well, geez, it's actually about 90 is the major resistance on this thing, but it seems to be tapering off uh, between that 87 and a half, let's give it an 80. This is a beautiful little sideways trade, uh, condor trade, credit spread to the downside, a targeted butterfly to sideways to slightly down, but give it a, that sideways element, and it is holding in there really, really nice. This is another trade that actually might be a possibility um, uh, for my uh, trade for tomorrow. And folks, that's going to be a live demo trade, and why I'm going to make it a demo trade, let's move on, is because... I want it to, I want it to, to uh, trigger. So I'm going to build it on Thinkorswim. It's more of kind of a Thinkorswim platform, how to use lab, but also how to analyze maybe one or two. We'll analyze a couple trades that we could put on it, uh, you know, diagonal or sideways vertical. We can discuss them and then actually place the trade and see what it does. Let me scoot back a little bit. Here is Southwest Airlines. I do like this. It's It's got a good range to it. There's a couple things that could be troublesome because it is a symmetrical triangle pattern folks or i should i should say uh yeah a triangle pattern that's actually getting tighter and as these squeeze and if you're a bollinger band trader i know a lot of you guys out there are you know that when those bollinger bands squeeze you want to play a breakout to the upside or the downside and this could happen i'm going to take the circumstance of where we are economically wise and what Southwest Airlines is looking forward to for the summer but what they have to deal with and this is where the tea leaves are very difficult to read on the one hand gas is going to cost them a ton I mean that's just no way around it so either they triple the get they triple our ticket prices or they reduce the amount of flights reducing that amount of flights reduces how much they can sell and it's this double-edged sword right makes the consumer pissed off because, oh, they canceled my flight. I go, oh, okay, you've heard all this. So do they come out of that ahead or are they just trying to survive? That is going to be the biggest answer or the biggest question to be answered. Now, in the short term, I just love it sideways. You can take kind of a median resistance area. Let's try to find a median support. And what I mean by median, I'm just taking a look at, you know, here's just some levels in the most recent area. Not the extremes, right? I don't want the extremes. I'm just taking somewhere in the, the, the middle, and we call it the, the meat, right? Look, if I draw these here, you got this, this. Eh, peaked out a little bit there, but that's okay. So maybe between the 42 and 46, something sideways here might be a really cool trade. That might be something to play with. Kind of fun. Uh, and not too long. We've been talking about this for weeks. In fact, it was even referred to on Sunday's trading. I believe Darren, or, or I think it was Darren that said, you know, anything past a week, two weeks, doesn't really make any sense. So if you're doing something shorter term, maybe a week and a half at most, a condor here, or or if you believe that, hey, I it might move here, we don't have to play both sides of the condor. We could just do the bull credit spread. Right? We could just do this side and let it go higher. Now, it's going to be super low reward, higher risk, but you're going to have a super high probability on it. It just depends on uh, where you're at. A lot of traders uh, that I've talked to over the last couple of weeks is, hey, Joe, I'm sitting on my hands. I'm looking forward to the end of June and July. I can take some vacations. I agree. I've got other traders that really want to be active in the markets but are afraid to. Their bread and butter isn't working. What I mean by that is their trading plan for up or down isn't really giving the returns that they, they need. So I say, okay, well, why don't you put on smaller positions? Or what you could do is you could take some of these out-of-the-money credit spreads. They're super high probability. A little bit of money is sometimes better than none if you have to be active. Uh, so keep that in mind. You don't have to force anything. So let's go to the bear. This is GoPro. This came from last week. And it really hasn't done much, but diagonal, credit spread, uh, vertical spread, Anything that was put on in, in that uh, kind of an area is doing really, really well. Straight puts, ew, it might be a little bit painful. And this would be one that I'd be tempted to take straight puts on due to its price, right? It's really nice to say, wow, I can buy 10 contracts or whatever it is. Doesn't mean that it's going to work out for you. And over the last week or so, it's just kind of milked its way down there. So when you are neg negative theta, it, it does hurt. Those days do hurt. So maybe a little bit of a credit spread even on this. 
or something diagonal. So that's all I've got. It's interesting how quickly your watch list can be depleted when a market goes up, then down, then up, then down, and so on and so forth, especially with the ranges that we've seen lately and the volatility. So what's going on with the market performance? I'm so happy to finally get a quick disclaimer on this. Folks, I have taken the market performance from Monday, Tuesday, and currently today, as of 11.50 Eastern Time. That's what you see here percentage-wise. So I've gone back and forth with Darren and Rob, and here at Maverick, we try to stay consistent as possible. So I want the trading room to go to the midweek, to go to the trading room, to go to the midweek, and this is just a revolving door. And I figure the best way to do that is Rob and Darren will talk about Monday through Friday. I can talk about over the weekend, Monday through Wednesday. So yes, folks, these returns are Monday, Tuesday, and as of when I took these numbers. I want to clarify that. I've had a few questions, uh, even with myself, <laughs> which would be best to do that. So when you see that the Dow, or I should say the Diamonds, the s and and the Qs, what they're up, that is for three days. That is Monday, Tuesday, and half of today. The Russells, you can see, did really well. Oil, not budging. In fact, it's been playing about that 120, 120 number, which is giving us a little bit of inflationary problems when it comes to what I'm reading in the news. So worries about, hey, I don't think oil is actually going to come down. We know that inflation is, well, let's knock on some glass here. I've got a glass desk. Let's knock on glass saying that it's pretty much stagnated. It's kind of sideways. So we are seeing signs that it's might have peaked, right? However, oil's not. And that is not going to be very good for the consumer going on airplanes and driving and so on and so forth. So if that can come down a little bit, it might alleviate some of the worries. And that's all that's out there right now, folks, are just worries. Uh, gold as well, just up slightly for the week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. All right, let's move on. Here's what we're left with. Here's that chart. Let me just drive this, draw this line. Major resistance. Uh, getting above the 410, I thought was pretty interesting through there. But you have the 50-day moving average. Uh, Darren made a really good point on Sunday that this eventually will catch up to it. And if we continue this sideways move, this choppiness, then it can, ca uh, can catch up to it where we might be able to gain some traction. We could see another bullish push, maybe to 430, uh, 440. It really depends on where the markets are and where the consumer's sentiment is. If we've thrown in the towel, super bearish, worried, give in to it, it we could roll over just as easy as we could uh, consolidate and move higher. So I don't believe we're there yet. I, I have to agree with everybody, uh, meaning everybody here at Maverick, that we're probably going to see this at least the rest of this week, maybe into next week. I know I have a C, we have a CPI number, but I don't think that's going to change much because whatever good news I see economically, we're getting bad news as well. So I just think we have this, where do we go from here, uh, chop in the short term. At least a week, week and a half. Diamond's showing me the same thing. A little bit stronger. It's, it's loaded up with some energy in there, which is outperforming in industrials, which are doing good. It's closer to its 50-day. But I do believe it's got that same story behind it. Now, tech, as you can see, it's, it's up, what, 1.12% for the last two and a half days but it has the most bounce. I seriously still believe this is going to be abandoned. If there is anybody that's glass half full, I'll take this opportunity to kind of echo an interesting th thing that Darren said on Sunday, which I do like. There's a lot of smart CEOs out there that are preparing for an economic downturn. You've got Elon Musk, you've got uh, Bezos, you've got, uh, there's two or three other big ones out there that have been, things are gonna happen. Then you get a, a company like Target, Target comes out and says they're trying to figure out a way to lower the prices so they can unload up their inventory. The only reason they do that is because they're worried about overhead. They're worried about uh, an economic slowdown and shopping is going to get less. Now, we have seen that. We have seen shopping go down considerably, but it's coming down from an all-time high over the pandemic. So it's really difficult to read if the consumer is slowing down. I got a wholesale inventories number here that's coming up, folks, that does show it is. Consumer inventories are actually increasing. So we're seeing the first signs of a slowdown on the consumer. On the other hand, on the other hand, we have traders that are optimistic. We have 
the consumer that says, oh, you know, Microsoft comes out and absolutely said, we are going to miss, period. Bottom fishers come diving in there. I'm on. Well, I'm on board. Let's do it. Maybe the worst is behind us. People that can maybe absorb what we're going to go through in the next month or so when it comes to this little bit of, right? Once again, you throw a ball in the air and it has this area where it just sits neutral and then it comes back down. So we're right at that peak to where it could go a little higher or it could just start to fall. Let's see how well we absorb it. So it's going to be interesting to watch. All right, let me get back to what we're talking about. The Qs aren't even revisiting their resistance at 320. Weakness is where it's been for a while and it's still there. So even in the bounce, folks, we can actually see that strength, energy, industrials, flights to safety, defensive is still doing well. In fact, you'll see here in the sectors, defensive is not doing very well as far as this week when it comes to pullback. But overall, and Rob made mention of this on Sunday with the sectors, the sectors are performing the way they have been for a while. The overall markets aren't. So let's get into those economic reports. We already talked about some of the ones from last week that I said, hey, good and bad, good or bad, it's up to you. But that foreign trade balance, Come on, it's came, has come off an all-time high. It was over $100 billion. Expecting to be 90. It came in a little lighter at that. So sure, the ball went up in the air. It hit this peak. It's coming back down. It doesn't mean that we stopped consuming. It's just we stopped consuming or, or the imports, I should say, have substantially dropped since. Does that mean we're, we're stopping too quickly? Or is that a good sign, meaning that we're going to curb inflation, right? If we go too fast, it could be bad. Consumer credit, $38 billion versus $35 billion. This cuts exactly both ways. In the short term, it's great because it keeps us from falling hard, creates that quote-unquote soft landing. But in the long term, we're stuck with debt if it all hits the fan. That's not good in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the grand scheme of things if the R word does happen. So here's that first slowdown. The wholesale inventories expected to be 1.9%, which was actually higher than previous at 1.7, and it came in at 2.2. So the build in inventories is a little bit more aggressive than expected. So the slowdown is actually happening. Once again, this justifies Target being worried. Whoa, we're seeing a build in our inventories. How can we lower some of the product costs and just get rid of this stuff? So we'll see uh, how that balances itself out. Sorry, for, folks, I nerd out on these numbers sometimes. We have the jobless claims, continuing claims, a real household net worth, domestic non-financial debt. These things have, are, are, have been created recently for uh, some of the stuff when it comes to interest rates. But the CPI is probably the only thing worth Noting, we'll see how the markets react to that. That's on Friday. But so there's not a lot out there. And with not that much out there, there's not much for us to do. Here's something else I have learned as I start the poll. I'm recording this on a different median. So when I launch the poll, nobody can see it unless you're on class. So I'm launching the poll right now, and I want you guys to start to trade it or, or, or push the buttons. And I want to share... Let's see if I can uh, minimize some stuff. I have to physically drag this over. There we go. So it's a very tiny box, but this is the market direction poll for you guys that aren't here live. And you could select plus one, plus two, zero, negative one, plus, uh, negative two, so on and so forth. Uh, at the, and you could vote more than once. And it takes a cumulative of the outlook of what we think the markets are going to be. I wonder if I can stretch this bad boy out. I bet you I can. Let's see here. Because when I, uh, well, it's going to be kind of small. Because when I share the poll, it gives us the results. All right. So for you who are in attendance, you are taking the poll. For you who are not, you are looking at the economic reports. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, 100% voted. That's all I need. It's the first time in a long time I've seen 100% participation from the class. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll, and I'm going to share the poll. And now... For you that are in attendance, this is what you see right there. It's market direction. Let me see if I can drag that out a little bit. Anyway, so it's kind of this sliding bar scale. Let me read you those numbers. Um, we have 76% is zero. 53% is a negative one. 18% is a plus one. So we are definitely taking into consideration about a, with well, a majority is going to be zero to slightly bearish. And that's what I'm talking about for you out there that uh, have probably watched these videos wondering what the heck I'm talking about at this level, at uh, this point of the class. <laughs> well, there it is. All right, guys. Awesome. Wow, 100% participation. That was sweet. Haven't seen that before. 
well, not for a long time. All right, guys, thanks. i got to resize some charts here. Wow. Yeah, that's right. You have to listen to me resize a chart. Okay, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Uh, let me hide that poll, and let's get moving. And I am 100% on board. Isn't that cool? So weekly outlook, or above the 20, below the 50. The slopes, one's up, one's down. Uh, I'm 100% zero, but monthly outlook, I'm negative one. So I am zero to negative one, right on board with you guys. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to go out and look for bears, but it sure as heck means that I'm going to be a little bit more pessimistic. I'm, I'm leaning a lot towards the, the sideways stuff. And what's tough about it, guys, I have a very strong bias to the butterfly. It's one of my favorite trades. And most of my butterflies are always, always slightly targeted, up or down, so on and so forth. But butterflies are very – they're almost impossible to land dead on, right? They're always a little higher or a little lower. I'm cool with that. However, when it comes to this wide range, uh, it's almost guaranteed that I'm not going to be – I might be within the range of the butterfly. Sorry, folks. Let's get past the sector analysis tab. But I might be – too far off. So at that point, it becomes just choose one direction, maybe do a credit spread or the condor, right? The condor. So weekly performance so far, guys, I just pulled this off of Finviz. This is, I believe, Friday and Friday. I'm not sure, but I just pulled their weekly graphs. Um, everything's up, right? Everything's up. Utilities and financials aren't up as much. Utilities has been super strong, but look at energy. Uh, I love the fact that Corey made a really good comment on this on Monday or, excuse me, yesterday on Tuesdays end of day saying that he might have been a little early pulling out of his energy stocks. doesn't matter. Taking profits, fine. It's great. However, when I see that there's still interest in it, I see there's still a worry and flight to safety. So even though these markets are consolidating and showing that they're holding in, I'm not seeing a lot of participation. Take a look at technology, 1.61%. I'd expect technology, if this was an oversold bounce, to be at 5 6%, some huge massive move or bottom fishing or if this was the quote that was the bottom quote unquote then yeah i would see more than 1.6% in technology i see 3% 4% 6% 5% i'd see a race right back to it but there's nothing going back in these markets so there's a little reluctancy for sure strongest and weakest it's going to be obvious energy leading the way take a look at that chart chart it's gone pretty much parabolic here the last time that would have been good for me at least the way that i chart is that ascending triangle end of May as it broke 85. So once that happened, I'm just playing catch up or trying to throw darts and I just don't have the gumption to chase anything that's running that fast. So I have what I have. Uh, I'll wait for corrective action in it, but there might be some energy companies inside of that that we could trade as far as the sector itself. It might be a little bit running away from us. Now on the financial side, this is the weakest, but it really hasn't broke down yet. So be patient on this. Once again, another thing, you're just yelling sideways. So sideways to bearish on this. Energy, a little bit more parabolic, but wait for it to correct. Play something sideways to up. Uh, you know, it's up to you. All right. So quick conclusion. We're off the bottom, but stalling out. And it's been this really cool debate. And I, I don't want to say debate, but conversations. If it really depends on who you are and where you're at. There has been a lot of money pulled out of these markets. A lot of traders say, okay, that's it. A lot say, no, there's more to come. And both could be right. We just don't know. We're trying to read the tea leaves. You guys have heard me tout economic data all along. I can't get it. When as soon as I see something good, I see something bad. So it, But it is starting to mess with stuff. I have that down on that bullet point. Starting to react to the higher rates. We're starting to see what the Fed has done. Really impact not only the consumer, but companies. Uh, you know, Target coming out, some of the builds and inventories, Target saying that we're worried about a slowdown. Some of these CEOs saying, woo, we're going to have a little bit of a hiccup here. But others turn around and say, yeah, we're fine. So it's going to be interesting to see what's up. So we got to just chart. Continue to chart the range on the indexes, draw some lines, and play inside of it. We can do that on the sectors as well. If you guys want to jump into whatever you want to, just find a range. Once it gets to the top of the range, if you're taking that bullish direction, get out. If it gets back down to the bottom of the range, get out. If you're going to play the range itself, something sideways, just trust in it. Make sure that you gave it enough room for the volatility. I've got a lot of traders that will put on a, 
I'm just going to make up some numbers here, a $20, $30 condor, and the stock goes between $18 and $32. It doesn't mean that it's a bad condor. It's just you have to be able to absorb that. So just go a little wider. Just go a little wider and uh, you know, give it its due. All right, that's enough touting. That's enough of me blabbing along. We're going to go out and try to find some trades. So let me just close this bad boy and... Looks like I scared the markets, as I was jabber John, because we got a little bit of a red drop there. <laughs> but hey, that could easily just turn right around and go the other way. Okay, so yeah, almost came back, and it's been so funny. The last couple of days, gapped up higher, traded all the way back down, gapped down, traded all the way back up. Here we are, back almost to neutral, and looks like we're just going to have another leg down. Okay, so what do we got? Not too much. Didn't think there would be. My goal was to pull one of your trades. And you know what? I'm not going to pick on you if the trade doesn't work out. I just want to use it as an example uh, for tomorrow to, uh, you know, how to analyze and look at a pretty good options trade and throw it out there. All right, so Joe's got a couple. Sideways, looking at, uh, okay, Delta, right? Uh, Delta Airlines, DAL. And uh, 3M, okay. Also, in the situation where it's just so fun. I mean, and, and, and oh, you know what really sucks, folks? I actually have a vacation planned for the end of June. And uh, we're just taking, making sure that our flights don't get canceled. You know, that's one of those things. Do they shut flights down or try to reduce the number of it or so on and so forth? It's going to be interesting to watch. But yes, I agree. This is a really good sideways trade. It's pretty sweet. It's kind of the same thing as, uh, well, obviously, as uh, Southwest. You've got some resistance here at about the 45 area, right? And, and uh, some support a little tighter to, from where it's at. Yeah, let's call it 36. Just give it a wide berth. You could actually tighten that up if you wanted to between the 42 and the 36, but I wouldn't go longer in a week. That's just my opinion. Or if you think this is just going to roll over and taper off, uh, 36 target to the downside, something sideways to, to bearish would be my guess. But I'm going to put it on the sideways train. Awesome, Joe. Thanks. Let's take a look at 3M. 3M is going to be... Okay, yeah. yeah. A little consolidation going on there. Let's see. Yep. Right about the 145 mark. See, this is where you can kind of get away with a butterfly. 150, 145, 140. Butterfly spread. You Depending on the numbers, I haven't run them. However, in my experience, you could get away with break even about halfway through here, depending on how tight, you know, how, where the volatility is, because it's a pretty big mover. So even if it closes right where it's at, 146, 147, if it is a week, week and a half down the road, you could actually make a couple of bucks. So I do like that. However, if you're a 145, 150 in, inside legs for a Condor, 135, 140, or excuse me, 140, 145, 150, 155. Uh, condor, sure, sure. Just make sure you guys understand the risk with the condors. They carry a little bit more, but they have high probability. All right, thanks, Joe. So Joel has NLC. High base breakout pattern with no confirmation. I want to be bullish, but I'm waiting. Ooh, yeah, look at this. Do, 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 do. I want to be reasonable. So I'm waiting for some from confirmation. Maybe you have good thoughts on it. Um, well, yeah, to tell you the truth, Joel, it, it confirmed yesterday. But you know, what's interesting about this, and you've heard me say this a thousand times over the years and years, I love the breakouts because the first thing they do usually is retest or consolidate. So today's action, absolutely. It's okay, we broke out. Profit taking, uh, counter trend trading, call it what you will. But if it can hold there, this is why this is a great opportunity for the diagonal spread or even the vertical with time because you need to let it absorb and uh, do that pullback. Uh, I do like it. I think it's I think it's great. I think it's confirmed com uh, comfortably for a diagonal spread. So I do like it. Let me put it down as a bull. Yep. And whatever you're trying to do on it, Joel, these can be a little bit difficult when it comes to maybe a vertical spread 
because you want to make sure that it's, you know, it makes you feel better to go your direction as it's working. So if you want to see if it can hold the 480 mark, I believe that's 480, uh, by all means do. You know, let, it, uh, let it play this game for a minute. If you want to catch it as it starts to roll higher, go for it. This is a big mover, folks. These are $20 increments, so this can move quite a bit day to day. Awesome. I like it, Joel. Justin is looking at EA. EA had the most interesting chart ever. And I think it was, the, was it buyout rumors? Yeah, I believe it was the buyout rumors. So this was done. It was done. Really done. And I believe a purchase or a buyout rumor, they're for sale or something or merger. I'm not sure. I'll have to dig it up. But it's just gone gangbusters, and it's, it's moved higher. Now it's back up at a resistance level. So a couple things to look with. Uh, on this, Justin. The first thing is when, if, once again, if the if an, if there is a absorption or a buyout rumor or some sort of, okay, we're going to give you this much cash and this many shares, the math can be done to where it will equate to exactly how many shares of EA that is, and that number will just peg there and sit there. So you can get into a situation where I'm going to buy this at 140-ish, at 145 target, and it goes between 139.50 and 140.50 for months because the announcement there were numbers you know this amount of shares this amount of dollars to buy you out by January 23rd or 2023 when you get into that situation this is useless however if it's still rumor uh, then yeah you can you can play with it and I think you're looking at a 140 145 bull call spread uh, for 644. Current market. He's like, I'm going to give this more time because of the current market. That's fine. That's that's fine. And there is a justification here for that 145 target. So as a technical chart, I agree. I think it's fine. I think it could be great. However, you got to do some research because the whole reason this happened is news. It's a buyout rumor. It's you know this is a company that was hurting. Now, I don't know what kind of Video games titles they've got coming on the pipeline, but it can't justify a 30% bounce off the bottom, <laughs> right? Or third, whatever that is, 30-something percent. But uh, but a buyout rumor can, and if it, you know, if they're going to go through with it, sure, it might sideways to up, might be okay. So I'll put it down on the bull side with an asterisk. And why I want that is because just understand this is kind of cool. Trading news is super difficult. It's just as difficult. It's just as big of a guess as earnings to me. So, all right, cool. Thanks, Justin. Awesome to look at. All right. Dan's got another idea, maybe another idea for a neutral short term. Is that MCD? Let me get my cursor out here. Let's take a look at it. <clears throat> all right. Okay. A 250, 245, 240 put butterfly yeah okay okay let's take a look at it you said 250 let me start where uh, yeah 250 245 oops sorry that was supposed to be a straight line okay cool cool put butterfly spread thinking that it might bleed off a little bit he does have some interesting areas here you know sometimes I like to continue my line to see if there's anything else of significance there might be might even slip a little here and come back. Looking at, uh, so it's a 1.2 to 1, June 17th. Okay, so that's a week and a half, I believe. What's the date? Eighth? Yes. Yeah, a week and a half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. He also has one that opens it up for June 17th. And that is, you got my max gain in there. Price 434, gain 500 bucks. Okay. What's interesting, once again, once you start to open up those gates, and this is what I always like to tell traders, is you need to give it enough room to absorb volatility. But what sucks is you'll notice that it costs more or you're risking more, but your probabilities are higher. So let's open this up to what he said, the 255, 245, 235. So anybody in this situation is going to feel a lot better, aren't they? Just a little bit more comfortable, more wiggle room versus where you're at 
tighter with the 250 than 245, 240. Just depends on what you want. You want the risk reward or you want the probability. There's no wrong way to do it. Uh, I'll put down McDonald's on the sideways. I'm going to put a little down arrow on it. How's that? Just in case somebody might be a little bit more bearish on it. Thank you, Dan. Uh, BHP. Move it on here. Oops. All right. 65-70 diagonal spread. 17th of June. 15th of July. Long play. Cool. All right. Yep. Totally fine with that. Totally fine with that. Let's see. 70. What is number 70? Yeah. Right here in the next week and a half. And you purchase deep, deeper in the money. Yeah. Nice. Okay. 65. And this is July, folks. That means you could sell here, sell here, sell here, sell here. However you want to sell. Unless they're monthlies. If they're monthlies, then you only got one bang for the buck. And what I hope happens is it expires here and then it shoots up to 80. <laughs> oh, I like it. Okay, I'll put it down. BHP. Materials, right? Metals, mining. Been doing pretty good. They're holding in. Okay, let's take a look at another one. For Justin. Oh, BHP. Oh, probably. It's going to be very similar, I imagine. Get onto my cursor. Oh, wait. BHP or BHP. 65, 70, 75 butterfly. Sorry. I thought you were showing me a different ticker symbol. That's right, folks. I make mistakes sometimes. Same trade, same, same setup, but changing it from a 65, 70 diagonal call spread to a 65, 70, 75 butterfly. And they would both work because think about your time frame in both those situations, or, or if you guys are kind of following along here, uh, 75 is about right there. It's the same end game. He believes the stock's going to be around $70 in the next week and a half. So, do you let it slow play, take the diagonal, let the long call go further, or do you highly leverage it with the butterfly, get a good risk reward ratio, and bang out the whole thing at that same time frame? His time and target are the same. He's using two different types of combos to achieve that gain. Pretty cool. That's kind of what I want to do uh, on tomorrow's class. Thanks, Justin. Okay, Dan wants to get back into T. Let's see, AT&T here with a 21, 22, 23 butterfly. June 24th or July 15th. Yeah, it's holding in there. This has been a very strong stock considering what's been going on uh, with everything else in this sector, the communications services have been getting slaughtered, but a couple of these guys are holding in. Let's draw some lines. Uh, 21, 22, 23. Cool. You know, in this situation, Dan, uh, you're probably better off. If you trade them like me, it, once it gets to 22, I'll take position. I'll take profit. A July would make more sense than a June 24th. It just gives you longer ter term, just in case the markets have to deal with this a little longer. Because even with a little spike up there, sure, if the June would give you a little bit more money, but the July would still give you money. And you could bang out of it uh, or part of it, and then when it comes back and tries to play this game, you might be a little safer. So with an out-of-the-money targeted butterfly, a little bit more time is better if you are intending to scalp it once it touches it, target-wise. If you really want to just go best bang for the buck, then yeah, I think the 24th of June. But if it spikes up there, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and see if you can't just milk that out. Uh, you might be a little bit more better uh, with the active management with something a little bit with more time. But I will put down T on the bull side because it is definitely a nice bull pullback and it's showing some pretty good strength. Fun trade. Thanks, Dan. Um, John Kane, long. Let's take a look at it. I guess my caps lock is on. All right. Think about going long cane, enter stock, or October 10 calls. Thoughts? Just a straight shot, huh? A sugar fund, financials, uh, straight. Okay. This is going to be fun as an options trading firm. This is a great situation for a straight stock. No time decay, no worries. 
just adhere to its range. I'm just going to draw lines on where I see support and resistance areas and be honest with yourself. Put an amount, amount of money based on maybe breaking the 9, 940 area here and get out and then just let it go. Uh, easy management system. This is back to the simulator trading, right, folks? Here at Maverick, we'd like to do our simulator trading yeah, with chart patterns. So, you know, it breaks up to 10, gets up to 1020. You know, adjust your stop to here, adjust your stop to there for sure. I think the easiest would be straight stock on that. Just be aware of um, your targets and your stops and position size for it, right? Don't buy too much of it and put a huge stop somewhere down in here and lose 90% of your position. You know, just be, you know, be responsible. But I, I think you should investigate more so the uh, stock side of it. Cool. Something new. Thanks, John. Okay, Sebastian. Got a couple questions here. Well, one target or stock pick on Johnson & Johnson. Looks like we're doing a 10 June. 10 June. Oh, this week. Forgot. We got this is week two. Okay. Uh, July 15, 180, 175. Dive and call. Cool. Sure. Sure. You know what's really cool about this? Take a look at the strike prices that you selected and how deep that one is versus the selling. This is almost a sideways trade, right? Because when you have that much intrinsic value and it plays this game, there's not a lot of extrinsic value to decay on that, but you could pull in a pretty good penny for that 180. And it's only for the next three days, folks. Now, the idea, what I'd be hoping for is three days, it gets to 180 and then Monday morning it gets to 185. But that's, that's a really cool trade. That's a good one. That's fun. Yep, it's good. Let me put it down. J&J, &J, bull. Thanks, Sebastian. And then you had a question about Zoom. Zoom. I'm going to have to. So here's something interesting. Rob made a comment on this. I pull up a chart like this, and you can't see it. This was at 400 bucks, and it's down to 100 and so I'm like traders saying, well, how much more could it go? And Rob made mention, you know, we had traders complaining about 60% loss, 65% loss in um, 2008, if you guys remember that, the financial debacle. I was around in 1999, 2000, 2001, 2002, with the internet pop when the bubble burst. 80% plus was common. So, yes, these can go much further down. And I do... Uh, I do believe they have a lot to give out. Now, Sebastian's thinking about, can this be in, in a reversal? And I think, I'm showing some lines, it sure looks like it can be. Does it mean it's going to, you know, get back up to 200 or 400? Oh, I can say with all confidence, no. There you go, there's my opinion. However, I think it does retrace this. There is a lot of shorts in there. There's a lot of short activity in this stock. There is a lot of rally to come so i think a squeeze sure now i believe you know the first stage of an uptrend let's see i imagine you're probably talking about something like this up to here so yeah i'd be super reluctant though anything above 120. yeah that's my two cents on it that's my two cents and it's difficult because charting wise it'll tell you one thing but the idea of you know, whoever's looking at it. Like for me, sure. Could it get up to 120? Sure. 150? Sure. Depends. You know, it's not like they're not being used. They're not selling their products, so on and so forth. But the heyday, this heyday that they had for, here you go. That That's that's over. That's over. That's not going to happen. So, but yeah, first stage of that training, going to play it slow, Sebastian. Kind of fun, right? Cool. All right. Fun class today. Boy, look at this. I really pissed off the markets. Let me type in the trades here while you guys take a look at these markets for a second. And then I'm going to cut you loose. So on the bull side, we had a couple to look at. Thanks for that. We'll take a look at those. I got to go through these and see what I want to take a look at uh, for tomorrow's example, right? It's going to be easy. It's just going to be whichever one's triggering, right? All right, neutral side, we had a couple airlines. I like those. I did love, but I like Delta as, as well. 
Just remember, I'm not going to type it in here, but remember, Love was one of the picks for today. McDonald's actually looked pretty decent, too. And, whoa, nothing on the bear side. Ha! Huh. Check that out. All right, uh, so here's the list. If you guys want to go ahead and write that down, I'm going to go ahead and draw some arrows because I did like McDonald's slightly down. Remember, this was a targeted but put butterfly, which I think is awesome. That's great. And then EA. EA is looking really strong. It's got a good bullish setup, but understand, I, I believe, you guys double, triple check this. It's in some sort of purchase or negotiation or it's, it's for sale or something's going on. So uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, that might give you a little bit more insight on why it's moved uh, the way it has and what you could expect moving forward. But the, the, the pattern itself is pretty clean. Awesome stuff, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. And if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. Love you guys. Take it easy.